Hello everyone and welcome to a video on the greatest launch vehicle rocket engine ever tested. It is the RD-704. It was only ever tested, it was never actually launched, it was designed for the MAX space plane, which did not actually get to go into service or anything, but it was made as a pair for the space plane, and that pair was also known as the RD-701. It was tested to the highest chamber pressure at that time, and only recently was beaten by the Raptor engine by SpaceX. Now you might wonder, well, if SpaceX has beaten its chamber pressure, doesn't that mean the Raptor engine is the best launch vehicle engine ever now? Well, if chamber pressure was everything, then that would be true. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about why chamber pressure is important. Chamber pressure means that you can pack a lot more thrust into a smaller volume. And if you pack a lot of thrust into a smaller volume, that means that you can make a smaller engine and a lighter engine. And that's why Raptor wanted to get that really high chamber pressure uh, so that they could pack in a lot of thrust into the small area. Well, I mean, it's not really a small area, but the area at the bottom of super heavy. They want to pack as much thrust in as possible. And so that's why they aimed for that chamber pressure. In the case of the Max space plane, which used this RD-704, of course, it has a certain limited amount of area on its tail. Uh, so they needed to make sure that they got as much thrust on there as possible. And in a later video, I'll discuss the Max space plane and its unique configuration. But for now, we're going to focus on the engine and why it is better than Raptor. <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit controversial, perhaps. Uh, so there's the engine. We only have one of them on here. And, uh, well, you'll notice that it doesn't seem like we have a lot of Delta V on this rocket. It is a launch rocket that is currently uh, designed to launch 7 tons into orbit. Normally, Earth orbit requires 9,500 meters per second, and we have only 2,820. Uh, where is the rest of it? Well, the rest of it is currently not being used by the engine because the engine had two modes. Now, if you've ever worked with Realism Overhaul with Kerbal Space Program or Real Fuels, um, you will have had the choice of using the denser fuels, like kerosene and oxygen or the hypergolic fuels, or the more efficient hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen has this nice uh, specific impulse, it's efficiency, intrinsic uh, efficiency, but it's not very dense. The hydrogen in particular takes up a lot of volume, which means heavier tanks. Uh, the kerosene and oxygen provides lots of thrust, but it's not as efficient. Well, they decided to fix the situation by making an engine with two modes. Mode 1 has kerosene, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's tri-propellant. It uses all three at the same time. The, uh, the kerosene and oxygen would not on its own be as efficient, and so they just throw some extra hydrogen in. and as a result, it gets 2,002 kilonewtons, and it gets a specific impulse at sea level of 356 and vacuum 407. I've seen varying numbers on this, the sea level at 330 and vacuum 415. I think what these numbers represent are actually the numbers for when the max space plane lights it and shuts it, uh, it changes mode rather than the actual sea level and vacuum. Uh, the regular sea level and vacuum would be 330-ish and 415, so a little bit different. But I'm, I didn't configure this configuration. I'm just using the configuration that came with Realism Overhaul. Realism Overhaul comes with an engine configuration for this rocket engine. Uh, I did adapt the model, though. So I applied the engine configuration that Realism Overhaul already has uh, onto this model. And I'll talk more about the model and give you guys the model when I talk about the Max spacecraft. So, tri-propellant initially, and that allows it to have a lot of thrust. And uh, but you know, it's it's not like space shuttle level ISP in vacuum, so it's not better than the uh, RS-25. But it has mode two, and mode two is pure hydrogen and oxygen, and it has a very big nozzle. It has a much larger nozzle than the Raptor sea level engine, but it has a smaller nozzle than the Raptor vacuum engine. So it's sort of a midway because they needed sort of a compromise nozzle to fit on the max space plane, similar to the way the space shuttle main engine has a compromised nozzle as well. Anyway, so with this compromised nozzle, it gets a whopping 460 vacuum ISP, and that's 
largely because of its nice chamber pressure, right? It can uh, get very good combustion efficiency. And in this mode, it only gets 785 kilonewtons. That's uh, due to the turbo pump situation. But by that point, it's fine because by that point, the rocket itself will be lighter. And so it's, it's a good setup. And so what we have is when we switch to mode two, uh, this tank here has the kerosene. So we've got two tanks. We've got one tank up here and another tank up down there. And then mode one is when we are on the bottom tank. And so that's the kerosene, hydrogen, and oxygen. And so this drains first and gives us 2,800 meters per second. And so that will drain. And then we will switch mode on the engine. So you can tell it's got to take a little bit of effort to set this kind of rocket up. But it's an SSTO. It's, it's a 7 ton to orbit, single stage to orbit system. And so the upper stage here, the, well, not upper stage, upper tank here is just the hydrogen and oxygen. And that gives us an additional 6,667. So when you add the two up, you get the 9,500 that we need to get to orbit. Uh, this starts out in the air, in near vacuum, at 1.13 thrust to weight ratio. Obviously, it would not be good for it to start at the ground in that mode. And that's why we have the bit down here with the kerosene. That gets us off the ground at 1.24 uh, thrust to weight ratio. So, we can, with this single stage, get to orbit with seven tons and let's just try that out the fins are there for roll control initially because well there's only one engine uh, i wanted to demonstrate this with one engine uh there's nothing fancy with the tanks they're aluminum lithium tanks they're just procedural parts they're not balloon tanks there's uh nothing fancy it's a normal procedural fairing the payload is just uh av gas tank but we're getting nearly a 5% payload fraction on a single stage to orbit, which is phenomenal. There are rockets with many stages that can't get 5% uh, of their launch mass into orbit. So here we go. We're going to try it out. And we're going to have to keep an eye on that kerosene. Well, actually, we can just do that up there. Once the kerosene runs out, we have to make sure to switch to mode 2. I've got that on action group 1. So ignition. And launch. I just put the kerosene plume on. It's probably needs some work. So it's a 140 ton rocket off the pad, 143 tons. It's a little bit less than the 5% payload fraction. So obviously in coming videos, I'm going to explore the potential uses of this RD-704, including the max space plane. And... We will see. The model of this engine was not done by me, and the max space plane also uh, I think the model came from Brand.ru, but basically Raider Nick handed me the model and said, deal with it. And it is a while ago, like years ago. So, um, it's been a long time coming, but it was a very complicated model, so. In fact, the .mu file, the model file in Kerbal Space Program, is 80 megabytes for the body of the max space plane. It's I've attempted to keep its details, but it's been daunting. A nice thing about the mode change and the fact that mode 2 has less thrust is that we naturally keep our g-forces to a good limit. And so, switch over. We left 11.7 uh, kerosene there, but that's fine. And now there's a 5 minute stage with this upper tank. 5 minutes and 14 seconds, I think. Very simple rocket. Obviously, if we want multiple stages, that could be good too. Um, but... This does suggest a few things. If you can get a decent payload on a single stage to orbit system with this engine. It suggests many things, in fact. The possibilities are endless. Okay, fairing separation. All good. SSDO trajectories are always weird, and I'm trying to 
limit the time to apoapsis while making sure we actually get into space with real solar system and that's at 140 kilometers so have to be careful about that but single stage to orbit rockets just have a different feel to them though with the mode switch on this it's a little bit better than a normal SSTO which would have a much higher uh, g-force at this point and be harder to fine-tune its orbit with okay getting close to orbit now we can't really throttle lower than this I think so we are getting a little bit high on the g-forces at the moment uh, shut down 224 by 148 barely in orbit on the 148 but yeah we're pretty low on this side we got 159 meters per second left the total mass right now in orbit is 16.55 tons if we separate off the payload the payload is in fact seven tons so yep there we have it the rd704 uh interesting little engine much capability and well let's see what we can do with it basically so look forward to that in future videos. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.